This week, I am taking a look at a listener's Upwork profile and pitch process, and I'm giving him feedback on how he can start landing higher paying clients. Are you ready? Let's go! What's up, self maters? This midweek episode is a little bit of a twist. We're going to take something I've been doing called Freelancer Fridays, which is where I answer your questions about freelancing and web design, and we're going to put it in the midweek episode spot because my conversation this week with a freelancer was really, really good. So it's a Freelancer Friday on a Wednesday. It's it's like breakfast for dinner, if you will, okay? And, and this week, I'm talking to Tomas, and Tomas is a freelancer out of Ireland. He was having a little bit of success on Upwork, and I encouraged him to raise his rates. Then he took a break from freelancing, and after coming back, he hasn't been getting the high-paying jobs that he's been aiming for. So we talk about everything from what types of jobs he's bidding on to his Upwork profile down to the pitch itself. This episode is also on my YouTube channel. If you'd like to follow along as I do a screen share of his Upwork profile and give him some feedback. So if you'd like, go to my YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the show notes for you to get there. Hey, if you'd like to have a conversation or if you have any questions about freelancing or web design, I'd be more than happy to jump on a call with you. I'll leave a link in the notes or if you go to selfmadewebdesigner.com, scroll down and there's a link to my calendar. Sign up right there at the bottom of the homepage. And who knows? you could one day be on the Self-Made Web Designer podcast yourself. All right, are you ready to hear about how to figure out why you're not landing high-paying clients on Upwork? All right, here we go. Tomas, how are you, man? How, how can I help you? I'm good, yeah. So uh, basically, as it stands right now, I'm over here in Bali at the minute. You know, I, I spent a bit of time freelancing beforehand and uh, just kind of going back in full-time right now. Just with heavier consequences than before, being kind of, on an island in the in the Pacific, so definitely want to make sure it's been done right. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it. So right now, I'm in the sort of proposal setting stage, kind of setting up the pipeline for the next while. And yeah, I suppose if I can get that kind of ratio of leads coming in at me, you know, significantly higher than my actual production rate, then I mean, then we'd be sweet. Um, yeah, for sure. So yeah, that, that that's it. Yeah. And you've you've mentioned it, and we we've talked before, and yeah, and, yeah. And you you kind of mentioned you've had a little bit of success on Upwork. I told you to raise your rates, and you did, and then and you haven't been getting as many jobs based on the rates that that you that you went to. So so tell me a little bit about that. Are you getting in? Are you getting interviews, and then they're just not spanning out to be actual hires, or what does that look like? Yeah. So I mean, I'm not sure if the issue is the actual. I would, I'm not sure if I'd say it's the, the issue is the actual rate that's currently being done right now. Sure. Um, not sure if it's, not sure if it's up, the fact that I'm using Upwork. I mean, obviously Upwork works really, really well. But one thing I've definitely noticed is, you know, there, there's the whole saying of the different pricing obviously tracks different demographics of, of, of clients. You, you obviously want something that's sort of financially, I don't know if I say fluid uh, or liquid, sure. liquid would be the word. So yeah, like up to this point, I've been getting calls and stuff like that. But yeah, most people that have been biting so far, it's either lower end things or up to this point, any of the bigger, more, more, you know, the, the, the bigger projects that I've gotten so far that, that might be worth a bit more money. They usually, there's usually a fairly big jump in technical skills that are required okay. using things like, you know, APIs and custom code and things like that. Now, this being said, my previous experience working for agencies and I have quite a few friends that are either A, freelancers or agency owners themselves. And they're in that kind of price point from like, say, 2000 to 10,000, depending on the, de depending on the, obviously the scale of the project. What I'm aware is that whole, per that branding that they have for themselves, as far as I can see looking in, seems to be what sort of sets them apart. Yeah, um, sure. So yeah, that that's the main thing I'm kind of looking at right now to to build up. Okay, okay. So are you getting calls or or interviews from Upwork for those high paying projects, and then they're just not going on to actually hire you, or is it you're getting all the calls and stuff that you're getting are just kind of the lower price point jobs? 
Yeah, so I feel, I, to me, I feel like generally once I get to a point of hopping on the call, I'm usually, I'm usually all right. But it's, I suppose, getting from that proposal sending stage to the call is, is you know, is, is where I'm really at. I'm not sure what would be a healthy, you know, he- healthy quantifiable goals to uh, sure. go for when trying to scale, you know. Should yeah. be five proposals a day, ten proposals a day, more, and so on. So once I get to the sale, the, once I get to the call, usually do okay. It's just getting yeah. to that point, I suppose. The big yeah, one. for sure. Okay, well then, you know, so if we look at this as a funnel, right, when it when it comes to Upwork, you've got your funnel of, you know, like reaching out to the to the to the client, and getting on a phone call, and then yeah. closing the deal, going through the project, getting good feedback, ending it all out, and then you know, that hopefully going on to referred business. So where the funnel is having an issue is actually getting in front of the client. So yeah, yeah. Obviously, that would that would be where I I would look at. So asking has asking the question of what is it that is keeping me from standing out amongst all the other people that are are bidding on it. So, you know, I think a, a good thing to do might be to sign up for Upwork's paid program, where I think it's like 15 bucks a month, but you can start to see where the price ranges are and the people that are sending proposals on it. Because there could be a lot of things to this, right? There could be a lot of reasons why you're not getting in front of it. Maybe, maybe you are pitching on like really low quality leads, you know? So for yeah. instance, if, if, if you are reaching out to somebody that's just maybe not a good fit for you, it's going to kind of be a waste of a time. So, you know, if you like the question of should I be pitching four to five times a day? What, what should I be doing? It, it all it all kind of depends. But yeah. what, I, what I like to say is that the best mindset to have is the freelancer scientific method. So you are making a hypothesis, you're making a guess at what is working or is not you're testing out that hypothesis. And then you're seeing at the results. So, and then from there, you you just do it all again. You know, you say, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna test out a new hypothesis and see that see that it works. So the 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 kink in the funnel might be what you're what you're bidding on. So you need to ask yourself some questions. You need, you need to ask, who do I serve the best? Right? What's what is what's the client that is like literally begging to find me? And so yeah. the way that the way that you do that is you look at where your where your really strong superpower skills as a freelancer are. So and you've already okay. kind of admitted like I'm not great at API. Well, that just because you're not great at API stuff doesn't mean that you're not able to find really high paying clients. I'm not I don't I don't touch yeah. APIs. Like I don't even know yeah. Yeah. I don't even know yeah. what API yeah. stands for, right? You know, but uh, but I'm still getting high paying clients. So so that's not yeah. a superpower that you have, but you definitely have some superpowers and, and seeing your sites, like you've got really good design chops, you know? So I think that's, there's something to be said uh, about that. So just, just kind of going like, what is it that I, what, what can I really bring to the table and what type of client is looking for that specific type of thing? And then you filter out your, your, your job feed in such a way that it is only serving up those specific types of jobs. Have, have you messed around a ton with the filtering on Upwork? Yeah, yeah, no, I actually have. Yeah, there, there's actually what I've usually been doing is going down to, you know, filtering down to proposals down by certain categories, certain niche words. If I can do it, if I can plug a SaaS product that I actually have found very, very good. There's one called Leapfrog Leads that I found very, very good. And okay. basically when I mess around with the filtering and, and things like that, what comes up is what's called an RSS feed. So the exact result, so I filter down to a very, very specific search query. You know, uh-huh. it could be, you know, WordPress, e-commerce and, you know, filter down to things with certain price points and so on. And then basically I've been getting a live um, email updates whenever that specific search result comes up. So I found it very, very good because it's basically been real, a way of getting real time notifications and kind yeah. of getting ahead of the crowd. So yeah. that's been like an inside tip that I was given. And I have to admit that's worked wonders for my yeah. uh you know, success rates. That's so awesome. I found you, it very good for that. Yeah. You, you'll have to send me a link to that. I've I've only used yeah. news feeds, RSS news feeds. So there's one called News Explorer that I use, which is yeah. good. There is a little bit of a lag time when it comes to some of those push yeah. notifications. So there's yeah. there's something to be said about just every once in a while jumping on the app and, and hitting refresh. Um, That's what, yeah. 
So, yeah. but, but it is helpful. Like if, like in seasons when I'm not actively looking for a job, I do have those notifications show up in case there is like, you know, and I think I only filter like any $10,000 jobs. That's the only ones I want to see, you know? And so that way yeah. I'm getting those notification kind of things. So I, I think that's good. Okay. So then the other step after your, your filtering is, you know, there's, there's the bidding, right? And so there's two parts to your bid. Okay. There's your pitch. And then there's there's your profile and those work hand in hand, right? So when you pitch, if a client likes what they see, the very next step is going to be, let me look a little bit deeper into what it is that this person is all about, right? And so yeah, you kind of have to think behind the eyes of the client, right? So what, what are they looking for you to say? What are they looking to hear from you that would say this person is worth this much money. So I, I'm, if it's okay, I'm just going to, yeah, far ahead, Jeff. I'm, I'm going to, no I'm going to look, I'm going to look at your profile here and just yeah. kind of screen share just so that we can kind of look through this. So yeah, a, cu- a couple so. of really good things. Your video is up and it looks great. You've even got a logo over top of it. I think it's awesome. So, all right. You've got some outside testimonies, which is awesome. Two things really. One thing definitely heavy pushing for obviously, you know, social proof is is key when it comes to any of this kind of stuff. And one thing I'm definitely heavy pushing for is getting reviews of previous clients. And yep. that's I suppose that's one thing that's jumping to me right now. I was listening to your own podcast on, you know, become top rate in Upwork and uh-huh. scaling pricing wise and all this kind of stuff. And I suppose even even just articulating it, I feel like with Upwork specifically as a lead generation platform. You, it, it's very much a, a case of treading carefully because sure. you know you want to be somewhat assertive and make it clear how important it is to get reviews. Whereas right. at the same time, I'm just very conscious of coming across too pushy and sure. and I'm um, shooting myself in the foot, so to speak. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we we might differ a little bit in that you might be have like a, a little European worry about being too pushy and me being an American. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm not. Yeah, I'm enough. not. I'm not quite as worried about it. You know, like yeah, all right, if. Fair enough. If you do a good job on a project, a client in the back of their head, they're going to be more than willing to give you a good rating. They're going to want to because they feel like you deserve it. They just need to be reminded. You know, like I've had clients go, oh my gosh, yes, thank you. Thank you so much for reminding me. And so, you know, I I wouldn't worry too much about that. Of course, you don't want to, you don't want to be rude. You don't want to be like, give me the freaking review now. You know, like, of course, you know. Yeah, that's exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the same time, yeah. No matter how much you want it. <laughs> right. There's there's something in yeah. sales called a kind persistence. And and so that's what I would encourage you to do is just consistently every once in a while, like, hey, you know, these are these yeah. reviews can be really helpful to me. I'd love it if you felt like I did a good job to to just let me know on a upwork feedback or if, if it's a good opportunity to say, if there's something that I didn't necessarily take care of, I, I'd be happy to do that for you. You know, so yeah. kind of coming back to that. So let let's look at your uh, profile here, because I think this might be a, a little bit of maybe a pain point on your profile, because everything else is looking okay. really good. This this kind of feels a little gimmicky to me. With, yeah, with the icons right. and things like that. There's just there's a lot, right? And and yeah. and so what you're trying to do is set yourself aside as a a an industry leader, right? You're you're trying to set your size okay. self aside as an expert and a consultant, right? And that's that's yeah. where you get into the high paid ranges. It's not when you're just a task manager like I need a website yeah. it needs these many pages, it's got these words, I need these images, now go do it, right? So that's that's going to yeah. get you the low paying types of projects. Yeah. But if you if you set yourself apart as an expert or as a consultant, that's where you can say, "Hey, I'm you know, 5 six, seven, eight thousand dollars, but you're not just getting a yeah. website, you're getting something that is going to give you a strategic advantage with yeah. your online presence, right? Yeah. So I, I'd remove some of these the um, emojis. I, and- yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And this yeah. the the top the top little section here is is you know I think it's like you've got 150 characters. This is this needs yeah. to be the meat of it. And right now it's it's really focused on on you as a developer. So yeah, you know, like you're reliable on time every time with fantastic communication skills, responsive web designer. So so in in the app world, they say you don't focus on the feature, you focus on the outcome, right? And so the yeah. the, the features would be 
you know, you get unlimited downloads, you get access to a library of 3 million songs, you get, you know, ability to make playlists, you know, and so like you never see Apple promoting iTunes that way, you know, like what they're saying yeah, is yeah. that you can, you can have a dance party in your pocket, right? Like that. Yeah. That, you're, that's, you're sending that's the emotion. Not yeah, the, exactly. Uh, yeah. And not so, the tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's what I would say. I would, I would just change up here just a little bit is, is just think about some of those underlying motivations for somebody that would want to hire you and address those yeah instantly in in this first paragraph to say, you know, I don't make cookie cutter websites, I make websites that are custom built for you so that you can improve your business, right? So you can garner more skills so you can sell more products, right? You're trying to get down into those deeper Yeah, the pain points. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, another thing you could do right here is I, I don't know if if this is all finished up. It looks like it is, but you could attach a portfolio image to this specific yeah. feedback. Have you ever done that before? Ever okay. tried? I didn't even know that was an option. Yeah, I knew, I knew I have to update my portfolio is quite out of date, but yeah, I didn't even know I could do that. So that would definitely in itself be a bit of a game changer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Give so some I, context I would, to it. Yeah. Right. For sure. And and I would do that. And then another thing with these portfolio images, you've got to think that people probably aren't clicking on the bigger view. Yeah. And so yeah. I would I would make the design of the website a little bit bigger, you know, so this is this is right. like dribble, you know, where you've got a yeah. really small surface area where you need oh, to, okay. it needs to look something like this, right? Where it's like, man, this is beautiful. It's got a nice background. Wow. I wish my website looked like this or something like this, you know, where it's okay. Yeah. There's a little bit of movement to it. It kind of catches your eye. And, you know, so it's a little bit more than just a template that you dragged and dropped some image onto. So I think that's good. I think another thing that you can do is get a little bit more specific with your WordPress plugins. And so this is going into the idea that the more you niche down, the more you can demand as far as um, the, the price point. And so rather than saying WordPress e-commerce, you say, you know, WooCommerce, you say easy digital downloads, you say, you, you know, whatever it is that you're using yeah. and then and, and taking off some of this. Are you getting any UI UX prototyping? No, that, okay. that seems like a bit of a waste of a skill there. Um, yeah, yeah. Looking at it, so... Yeah, I, I, and so I think you could just replace that, you know, with like WooCommerce or yeah. something, some specific plugin. That was yeah. one of the things that I did kind of accidentally at first was I, I put a really specific plugin on my skills and, and I had that and like three other things. And so when people okay. saw me, they thought, okay, this guy, you know, he's, he doesn't have all these lists of skills. He's, he must be an expert in, in this one plugin. And so they always hired me. For yeah. That. Um, yeah, he's and, the WP Bakery guy or the Elementor guy or right, Divi exactly. or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah. that's what I would do. So, so that's maybe a few tweaks that I would say as far as your your profile goes. So let, let's talk a little bit about your yeah. your pitch. What does a typical pitch look like for you? So I suppose within the proposal, the first thing I want to do is generally just address why I think I'd be a good fit for their job based on what they're saying. You know, making sure that I'm using whatever keywords were in their actual, you know, job post in the first place, then I generally address what, whatever I haven't specifically acknowledged. I usually have an invite to a Canly link and basically explain that I can go over, you know, any, any undiscussed details on site call because a bit of advice that I was given was, you know, effectively any of these real initial interactions are just getting you towards that call because you can obviously pitch better vocally than you can over any anything. So what I usually do is a acknowledge what you know what I think why I think it would be a great fit in reference to previous work I've done, giving examples. Then acknowledge what I haven't done and say you know if you want to hop on a call, feel free to kick, click a time that works. And yeah, and basically just refer to my own upper profile, my own personal website, uh, and then sign off. And then on the actual sales calls, which to be fair generally do go quite well. There's a great quote on a video by the future, and they kind of said mentally, you know, when you're in when you're doing sales, if you just mentally replace the word sell with help, you know, that's just a complete paradigm shift that works mm. really quite well. So yeah, first half 50, 50, 60% of my calls are literally what exactly is going on in your business? Why exactly do you need a website? Well, what, what would it mean to you to hop in a call to get a website? Yeah. And then to, I generally reiterate and clarify, you know, have I gotten anything wrong here? Um, am I mistaken? Anything? Am I leaving out any details? And then, you know, the sort of verbally agreeing. And then I propose 
I you know, say, this is what I propose I do, elaborate the solution to the pain points they brought up, and then sort of basically try and close it then and say, you sure. know, will we get started? So that part of the process generally goes well. It's just, as you said, getting to, getting that. to that point. Okay. Yeah. So there's a few really good things that you're doing in your interview that I, it doesn't sound like you're doing in your pitch. And so I think that might be where some of the rub is. So for instance, in your interview, you're, you're talking about some of those core motivations, right? You're, you're saying, Hey, like, this is, this is why it would be good for you to have this thing and, and how I'm an expert in this and I can help you get to that, yeah. right? But, it, it, and maybe you're doing this and, and maybe I just misunderstood, but it sounds like yeah. in your pitch, it kind of it kind of looks more like your profile where you're talking about how reliable and awesome you are and you have the skills, right? And and again, think about those as features, you know, you, you, and you want to yeah. focus on outcome, right? So in your yeah. pitch, you're saying, hey, my name is Tomas, um, a WordPress developer and... I, I really feel like we can take the website that you have, do a redesign and get you more sales or something like that. You know, it's a real, real basic yeah. idea. Um, yeah. So, so I, I would make sure that that is at the very top. Yeah. And, and then also something else that can be really effective and, and really I, I would look into sales copy because that's, that's what a pitch is, right? Okay. It's, it's just sales yeah. copy. Another thing yeah. that you can do in, in copywriting, they, they talk about addressing the anxiety, you know, like, so thinking about the objections that they might have and giving them the answers to the objections before they even yeah. have them, you know, it sounds like you've been doing a little bit of this, which is great, which is something called yeah. voice, voice of the customer. And voice mm -hmm. of the customer is when you literally take someone's words and you parrot it back to them in such a way that it makes them feel like, yes, you are the perfect or this is the perfect solution for me. Yeah. So let's say, you know, somebody says, I need a, a really creative out of the box thinking web designer who is focused on conversion. And so you would first start with, you know, the outcome, like here's, here's the results of what you would get from working with me. And then you would say, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a really, you know, you know, left or right brained creative web designer. And I, I focus yeah. highly on getting users to become purchasers or become clients. And essentially what you're saying is I'm good at conversions and I'm creative, right? You know, but you yeah. just kind of, yeah. you've kind of paired it back to the so, Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So that's something that can be really helpful. And then at the end of every pitch, I put I, I put my own website for sure. I don't link to my Upwork profile because that's actually linked from the pitch itself. Yeah. So yeah, I just refer it. I don't link it. Okay. But. Yeah. So I would do that. And then I typically say I've got here are three of my most latest projects, you know, and then yeah. and then I put the ones that I'm most proud of, right? You know, they don't necessarily yeah. have to be the latest, like, you know, the term latest yeah. is kind of, but it, so, so that's kind of a general framework. And what I'm hearing, it sounds like there's a little bit of, of lack of confidence when you are pitching, you know, you, to kind of focus mm -hmm. on what you're not skilled at or what you're not sure about in the pitch is yeah. it would be a little bit of a red flag. And, and, I, and I understand the heart behind it. And I totally yeah. back that up and say, like, you don't want to try to pull the eye, the wool over somebody's eyes. You're not trying to you know, yeah. trick somebody into hiring you. But there's this game to play when it comes to the interaction, the first interactions of clients. And, you know, you, you unless it's a real sure thing, like unless somebody says, reaches out to you directly on Upwork and says, I would like to hire you, you know, and then you say, okay, now yeah. listen, here's my limitations, you know, but if you're, if you're Don't trying to, that. right. Yeah. I like that's, yeah, that's yeah. a conversation <laughs> that comes in the interview, which again, you, yeah. you can qualify more, you can explain yourself more, but, but, I, but I would do what's called assuming the sale when it comes to this. And this is, this is another kind of aggressive, aggressive American tactic. Okay. Where you're kind of just saying like, no, I'm going to do a great job for you. This is going to be awesome because all that's true. You know, you don't, you don't want to say like, yeah. I think I can do okay. I might be all right with yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to say, no, you, like yeah. I'm a hundred percent confident that you're going to get a website that you love that helps your business move forward. You know? So yeah. I, I would maybe think about how you're phrasing things. So is all this, yeah. is this helpful? No, hundred percent. Definitely. I'm probably coming across as less confident than I usually am, but sure. I definitely completely agree with, with, with what you're saying. Yeah, no, that, that all makes complete perfect sense. And like I said, I suppose within the actual written proposal side of things, I feel like if there's any reason that I'm not conveying the confidence that I usually would, it just because I'm sort of aware of the lack of social proof that sure. is kind of there with a the new upper profile. And I kind of feel like, the stakes are generally heavier 
sure. just because, you know, a review, you know, if you've only got two or three reviews, one potentially negative review is a, I mean, that's 33% of your, sure. of your total reviews, but it kind of boils down to something you said in a recent video or podcast yourself, you know, knowing when you're definitely biting off more than you can chew, you know, as a friend of mine said, actually, I think it was only yesterday, you know, no review is better than a bad review. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you can kind of keep, if you can keep that mindset going into it, I suppose there's no reason not to be confident with the, with the ones that you actually do commit to. Sure. Um, sure. If you kind of play by that. So yeah, yeah it's good advice. Well, and I understand that fear, you know, cause there is a lot of weight to a, a client review, especially, especially when you're first getting started, but myself, I, I you know, the, one of the third job I, I did so bad that the client shut me out of the project, closed it down and demanded the money back. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. So and you're, and you're still standing. I'm, I'm still here, you know, and, and so I know <laughs> yeah. like there's, there feels like there's a lot of weight. It's actually a lot less than probably what you, you would an- anticipate. And, and I, and I think it's good yeah. that you're going into it eyes wide open to say like, I really need good feedback. It's very important for me right now to get that. But that, that doesn't, the good feedback doesn't happen in the pitch. You know, the good feedback happens at the very beginning of the conversation, the the actual conversation, and when the client says yes, yes. and and so you know if the most any good client will understand a limitation, like you know they're yeah. going to understand you can't do everything. In fact, you don't want yeah. me to be able to do everything because that means yeah. I'm I'm kind of okay at a lot of things versus being really yeah. good at a, at a few things. And so yeah, jack um, of all trades, master of none. Right. And so, and so yeah. by, by, by presenting things in that way and even presenting your limitations in such a way that it kind of puts you in, in the, in, in a good light. And that's, that's kind of the, yeah the, um, the joke, you know, when you go in an interview and they're like, what's your, what's your biggest weaknesses? And the person says, well, my biggest right. weaknesses is that I just work way too hard. You know, it's like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's something to that, that, you know, you, you yeah. don't, you don't apologize for what you don't have, you know? So something I did at the very beginning was I would say I'm new to Upwork, but I'm not new to web design. So I have a lot of experience. I'm happy to give you testimonies or even connect you, give you the phone number of people who have, I've worked with because they'd be happy to talk to you, you know? So you gotta be careful with that. You you don't want to come across apologetically. And, 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 and so you say it with confidence. And there was even a time my job success score was like 79%. Like it was bad. Okay. Yeah. And, and I Don't realized that. It. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. It was, it was yeah. a tough season. So I just, yeah. I just told people, I'm like, listen, you know, the elephant in the room is that my job success score is not high. I I'm, I'm working through some things on the Upwork side. I don't really know quite why that's happening, but I can assure yeah. you that I will do a good job for you. And I, I'd be happy yeah. to put more of the risk on my shoulders than it is on yours to make you feel as comfortable as you need to feel. So, yeah. so you, you kind of have to, you know, you, you kind of have to wonder like how many people are actually looking at my feedback or actually looking at my reviews and does that even make a difference? You know, if I'm, if I'm calling it yeah. out, am I bringing attention to something that maybe they even haven't thought about? So, you know, you, yeah, you've got to be careful, but, but there's a way yeah. to do it and there's yeah. a way not to do it. Okay. Yeah, no, that's, that's good advice. Kind of actually one thing I wanted to bring up just on something that we're talking about earlier on with regards to the actual initial proposals and, you know, success rates. One thing I've even found recently was the proposals where I got the most success were ones where I was immediately trying to provide value. Maybe you might disagree with that, but you know, the whole thing of kind of giving away what you know straight away, you know, it's only going to do you justice. Um, you know, seeing proposals where clients were like, you know, I want, you know, I want, you know, a landing page and about page and a contact page. And I'm debating doing X, Y, or Z would be open to feedback down the road. And then I suppose just giving my solutions off the top of my head, yeah. even referring them onto some good things that I've seen before, straight away, just giving knowledge as opposed to just yeah. requesting the job. I mean, that for me has, you know, by far been the most um successful way of going about sure. things. So yeah. I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. Yeah, no, that's great. And, yeah. and, you know, I think the point to that is if you find something that's working, then lean into that, you know, like, and, and to that, I would say, I have found that it's real client specific, what they're, what they're looking for. My, my yeah. most winning proposals are like three or four sentences long, you know, it doesn't even really get into oh, what it is right. that I'd be doing. But 
again, that goes back to you, you have a, a secret sauce that you're able to offer that I'm not able to offer. And so you might find a, a different result from a different methodology. But my encouragement to you would be to look for cues as to what the client is looking for in your pitch in the job description. So there's two parts yeah. to that. There's the the client's personality type, and then there's yeah. the, the actual meat and potatoes. So the actual thing that they're they're looking for. So the, the personality type, you know, some clients, you can tell they're, they're super friendly. They're actually looking f- to build yeah. a relationship with somebody. And so yeah. you don't, you don't want to get too heavy into the, into the weeds of the technicalities. You want to say like, I really like your business. I like what I'm seeing on your website. You know, you're, you're giving them yeah. cues that you're, you're just a, a real relational guy. And then there are some who's like, I need this, 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 and this. That's the cue that like, okay, I do need yeah. to get straight in there. Right. They're, they're not looking for a buddy. <laughs> they're they're yeah, looking exactly, for somebody yeah. to just they do the job. job done. Yeah. So, but yeah. It, as you, as you find those things, you know, then for sure, you know, focus on, on that kind of stuff as you're, as you're seeing copy, a sales copy that, that kind of works for you. Man, such a good conversation. And I love Tomas's attitude and willingness to grow and try new things out. I, I can say with 100% assurance that he will one day be getting those high paying clients that he is going after because what he's doing is really the formula for success. You try things out, you take some risks, you get feedback from folks who have already been down the path that you're trying to go down and you just keep going. I've got a course that I'm launching at the end of August 2020 called Upwork for Web Designers. And in it, I go in depth into how you can become a top rated and top paid freelancer on the Upwork platform. And I go through everything. This is a deep dive, (laughs) y'all. We're talking about from how to figure out which clients are perfect for you on Upwork down to how to have an interview that can actually get the client to raise their budget. It's a pretty beautiful thing. So if you'd like to sign up to get on a waiting list to keep up with when the course is launching, go to upworkforwebdesigners.com and fill out a small little form. And we're talking about just your email address. Okay. That's all. That's all I need. And I will keep you in the know. All right. That is it for this week. I'm glad you are here with me on this journey to become a self-made web designer. And we are back at it again next Wednesday. We won't be having a freelancer Friday since this was that freelancer Friday, but have a good week. Keep going for it. And don't forget if you don't quit, you win.